When we read about the Kushanas in our history books and particularly what kind of religious affiliations these Kushanas have, we get this impression that these Kushanas were follower of Buddhism. Now in this video, we will look at whether this claim is based on the historical evidence or not. And we will start our discussion with the period when the Kushanas has not yet emerged. During this time, the Kushanas were part of one of the five principalities of the Yuchis. Now these Yuchis had established themselves in the region of Bactria. This was the period of 1st century BC. Now in this region of Bactria where Yuchis have settled, we find that it was influenced greatly by the Greco-Bactrian culture. Greco-Bactrian culture is basically the culture of the migrant Greeks who had settled earlier in this Bactrian region. So it was the Greco-Bactrian culture that was prevailing in the region of Bactria when the Yuchis settled in this region. So because of this, we see that in the coins of early Kushan rulers, we see the depiction of Greek gods and goddesses. Here in this coin, you can see that the Greek goddess Nike, who was the goddess of victory, is depicted. Another evidence about the religious affiliations of the early Kushanas can be seen from a site in southern Uzbekistan. This is the site of Khalchian. In this site of Khalchian, archaeologists have found a palace which was possibly a residence of the Kushan aristocracy. And from this palace, archaeologists have found the depiction of the Greek goddess Athena. And apart from Athena, we have Mithra, who is also depicted and alongside Mithra, there is the depiction of goddess Nike. And interestingly, she is represented in the company of a bearded god. Now historians are not sure who this bearded god was, but the speculation is that he was none other than Zeus. And Zeus, we all know, is depicted in the coins of Indo-Greeks. So it makes sense that since the region was greatly influenced by Greco-Bactrian culture, this means that most likely this bearded god was Zeus. Now there is one important point which we should keep in mind here. The depiction of Greek gods and goddesses in the coins and palaces of the early Kushanas does not mean that the Kushanas adopted the Greek religion completely. It means that these Kushanas most likely depicted their own god and goddesses who they worshipped before their arrival in Bactria in Greek iconography. So in other words, the Kushanas used Greek iconography to worship their own Iranian god and goddesses. So this is the distinction which we should keep in mind. Now coming to the period of the first prominent Kushan ruler, Kajula Cataphysis, we find that during his reign, important religious changes occurred. So if we take the early coins of Kajula Cataphysis, we find that here Greek deities are depicted. And as I have said earlier, these Greek deities were most likely Iranian deities that were depicted using Greek iconography. Now, in other coins of Kajula Cataphysis, we find that instead of using the Greek script, which was earlier used by the early Kushan rulers, Kajula Cataphysis had started using the Kharoshti script. In some of these coins where Kharoshti is used, we see the legend which reads Kujulu, Kasasa, Kushana, Yavugasa, Dramathita. Now here, Kujulu Kasasa is the name of Kajula Cataphysis. Kushana Yavugasa is Kushan Yabgu. Yabgu is the term which means Governor Generalship. The last term, Dramathita, is extremely important. Dramathita is the corruption of Dharmasthita which means steadfast in dharma. Now this passage steadfast in dharma is quite important for us to understand the religious affiliation of Kajula Cataphysis. Some scholars have argued that in this passage the term dharma is used for Buddhism. So most likely Kajula Cataphysis was a Buddhist. But recent scholarship has argued otherwise. They take the example of an inscription of Huvishk who was a later Kushan ruler that was found from Mathura. In this inscription, the term Dharmasthita is used 
But then the inscription goes on to tell us that Huvishk was conferred this kingdom by God Sarva and Chandivir. Now, Sarva is another name for Lord Shiva. So basically, the term Dharmasthit in this inscription of Huvishk is associated with Lord Shiva, not Buddhism. So if that is the case, most likely the term Dharmasthit that is used in the coins of Kajula Kedphysis was also associated with Lord Shiva, not Buddhism. So Kajula Kedphysis was a devotee of Lord Shiva. Now the use of Kharoshti also denotes that in this region of Bactria, religious ideas that originated from India and Indian culture has also spread. This spread of religious ideas from India and the Indian culture was most likely because of the movement of Indian merchants in this region. This movement of Indian merchants and traders was facilitated by the growing long distance trade which happened in this region. So this was one reason why we find that Kajula Catphysis in his coin has started using the Kharosh script. Another reason for the use of Kharoshti script was most likely because of the expansion of the Kushan Empire during the reign of Kajula Catphysis. We know that Kajula Catphysis was the first Kushan ruler who had conquered a great chunk of northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. During his reign, the territory of Takshila and the surrounding region was conquered by the Kushanas. So the use of Indian script and his affiliation to an Indian religion was also due to these two factors as well. Now we should also not forget that Kajula Catphysis had not abandoned the Greco-Bactrian culture. After his victories, when Kajula Catphysis assumed the title of Maharaj Rajati Raj, which basically means Great King, King of Kings, Kajula Catphysis chose to depict the Greek goddess of victory. So this clearly suggests that the older Greco-Bactrian culture has not died out, but there was also this introduction of the Indian religion that happened during the time of Kajula Catphysis. Now, during the time of Vima Catphysis, the Kushan religious life can be identified having two interesting features. First was the use of Greek iconography to depict Iranian gods and second was the devotion towards Indian religion, particularly to the worship of Lord Shiva. So these two interesting streams mingled during the time of Vima Catphysis. In the reign of Vima Catphysis, the Kushanas conquered a great chunk of Indian territory. And with these conquests, the cult of Lord Shiva also became more prominent. And uh, this prominence of the cult of Lord Shiva can be seen in some of the coins of Vima Catphysis. In some of the coins, he uses the title of Maheshwar. Earlier, it was believed that this title is used for Vima Catphysis, which means that Vima Catphysis is calling himself Great Lord. But recent scholarship has argued that the title is written in Kharoshti script. And in Kharoshti script, one interesting feature of this script is that there is no distinction between A and A. So, uh, this title could either be Maheshwar or Maheshwar. And most likely uh, here, uh, Vima Catphysis is calling himself Maheshwar, which means worshipper of Shiva, not Maheshwar or Great Lord. So these two different interpretation of this particular term is there. And I believe that here the term Maheshwar is more possible. So most likely Vima Catphysis is calling himself Maheshwar or worshipper of Shiva. So this, this suggests that during the time of Vima Catphysis, the cult of Lord Shiva has gained prominence. Now this interpretation clearly aligns with other evidence. So we have an evidence that comes from a site called Delbar Jin, which is located some 50 kilometers northwest of Bulk. From here, a temple was found where there is a painting that depicts Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. So this clearly suggests that Vima Catphysis was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. 
Then, Vima Catphysis also had a title called Mahozinigo. Mahozinigo means protege of the moon god. And there are some scholars who argue that the divine patron of Kushan rulers was an ancient Iranian moon god. And we all know that uh, the moon is also associated with Lord Shiva. So this similarity between an ancient Iranian moon god and Lord Shiva also contributed to the religious affiliation of Vima Catphysis. Apart from this, during the time of Vima Catphysis, another religious practice evolved. And this was the worshipping of Kushan rulers themselves. We all know that the Kushan rulers saw themselves as deriving their royal power from divine patrons. So the next logical step for these Kushan rulers was to consider themselves as divine beings. So this uh, consideration or this view that the Kushan rulers were divine beings already existed. But during the time of Vima Catphysis, we see that two Devkulas or DT house were constructed by him. The first was near Mathura and the second was in Afghanistan uh, in a place called Surkh Kotal. And from these two places, archaeologists have found statues of Kushan rulers, which suggest that in these Devkulas, Kushan rulers were worshipped as divine beings. So this is a third religious tradition or third, third religious practice that was started by Vima Catphysis where the Kushan rulers themselves were worshipped as divine beings. So by the end of Vima Catphysis reign, we see that there were three distinct religious practices or tradition that was worshipped by the Kushan rulers. First was the Iranian uh, god and goddesses that were depicted using Greco-Bactrian iconography. The second was the worship of Indian god and goddesses and the third was the worship of Kushan rulers themselves. So these three distinct religious tradition was there when Kanishk ascended the Kushan throne. During his reign, Kanishk focused greatly on the Iranian religious cults. And we see that in his coins, instead of using the Greek name of gods and goddesses, we find that the name of Iranian god and goddesses are used. So we have names like Mioro, Mao, Aosho, Nana. This replacement of the Greek names is part of a larger movement where Kanishk has also replaced the Greek script with a Bactrian script. Then we see that Kanishk has also uh, continued to promote the worshipping of Kushan kings as divine beings. Uh, the royal worshipping center at uh, Surk Kotal, which was built by Vima Catphysis, was completed during the time of Kanishk. Now, these two different tradition, that is the worshipping of Kushan kings as divine beings, and the second uh, was the Iranian religious tradition, can be seen intermingling in one of the great inscriptions of Kanishk. This is the inscription which we call as Rabatak inscription. Here, Kanishk is described as righteous, the just, the autocrat, the god worthy of worship, who has obtained the kingship from Nana and from all the gods. Nana here is the Iranian religious goddess. And here we can clearly see that Kanishk on the one hand proclaim himself as a god who is worthy of worship and on the other hand, he is telling us that he has obtained his royal power to rule from Nana and other gods. Now, another religious tradition which continued during the time of Kanishk was the worship of Shiva. This can be seen from the coins of Kanishk where Shiva is depicted. Now here, the term Oesho is used for Shiva. The term Oesho is derived from the Sanskrit term Vrisha or the Prakrit Vesh and Vrisha means bull. So we all know that here Vrisha is used for Lord Shiva. Now there is this association of Kanishk uh, with Buddhism that we read in our history books. But I will not discuss this topic here. I will discuss this topic in this video which you can watch when it will be uploaded. And you can watch the entire history of the Kushanas in this playlist. Thank you for watching.